Is Bitcoin the biggest bubble in modern day history or will it go to the moon and continue to soar like all of the YouTube gurus out there are suggesting and should you pour your life savings into Bitcoin and if so, when? What's up you guys, my name is Michael Elefante. Today I'm going to review a little bit more in depth what Bitcoin is, how it works, what the hype is all about, and what predictions I have for Bitcoin personally. I have recently become fascinated by Bitcoin and crypto altogether, but more importantly, the blockchain technology. The growth of the crypto market is beyond retail investors and now pouring in interest from all sorts of institutional investors and companies alike. Bitcoin has been on fire recently and surged to all-time record highs week after week the past couple weeks here in 2021, recently touching uh, an all-time high above $57 thousand dollars per Bitcoin which broke through the one trillion dollar market cap and in filming this video today Bitcoin has crashed back down eight uh, percent and is hovering in the lower fifty thousand dollar range so is this just a fad or is this actually sustainable growth and what can we expect from Bitcoin both in the near term and the long term hang with me in this video and we're going to briefly break down what Bitcoin is blockchain technology and why there's so much hype in the crypto market. And of course, when will this Bitcoin bubble burst? Before we begin, don't forget to smash the like button below. It helps with the almighty YouTube algorithm. Honestly, I genuinely appreciate it. And if you guys want to subscribe and follow along for other content, anything around investing, personal finance, real estate, Airbnb, all that fun stuff, I post here every single week, several times a week. So I would love to have you subscribed and following along. All right, for all the newbies out there, what is Bitcoin just from a thousand foot overview? Bitcoin was born in the year of 2009 by an unknown group or person uh, known as Satoshi Yakamoto. Now this group or person wrote the original white paper on Bitcoin. Unlike fiat currencies such as the US dollar, Bitcoin is created, distributed, and stored using blockchain technology, which uses a decentralized ledger system. What's really unique about this blockchain technology is that it is decentralized and dispersed across many, many computers running around the globe. Now, these computers are often known or referred to as nodes. And because of this blockchain and ledger system, there is supposedly full transparency on the history of transaction within Bitcoin. So theoretically, no one can cheat the system. And because it's a decentralized system, uh, it actually strips away much of the monotony and uh, middleman work that we currently experience of fiat currency with a centralized systems throughout the world. For example, if you swipe a Visa credit card, there's actually four parties involved. First, you have the merchant, then you have the acquirer or the financial institution that enables the payments to the merchant the issuer or the cardholder's bank, and the individual cardholder themselves. So with Bitcoin or really any other blockchain technology or cryptocurrency, uh, you eliminate the parties in the middle. Another big reason why people are bullish on Bitcoin is that it can be viewed as a global currency. Unlike fiat currency where you have to actually pay a foreign exchange rate when you're exchanging the US dollar for the, the pound or the euro or something like that, Bitcoin, there is no need to do that since it can be used at a global scale. And now for my personal reason why I like Bitcoin and the idea of Bitcoin is that it is not centralized and controlled or have heavy government influence by any central government. So with Bitcoin, there is no ordinary regulation on the purchase or sale of Bitcoin. However, there is for any fiat currency such as the US dollar. So basically, Bitcoin provides so much more flexibility than traditional fiat currencies. So it sounds amazing, right? And maybe you're about to jump on board and throw your life savings into Bitcoin because it's going to go to the moon. It's going to go to $500,000 a coin or maybe even a million dollars a coin. But how do we know this? And also, why isn't the whole world using this technology already if it's so great? And what are the chances Bitcoin could fall flat on its face and go completely to zero? A lot of people like to compare Bitcoin as a store of value when comparing to gold. Now, the reason people compare this to gold is because they view Bitcoin and gold as a hedge against inflation. Now, a hedge against inflation just means you are able to store your money into these valuable assets 
Uh, so when the Fed continues to print money to infinity and beyond and cause inflation, which causes everything in our life to get more expensive because it actually devalues every single dollar that's fluctuating throughout the economy. So you as a consumer actually have less purchasing power by holding on to fiat currency such as the US dollar. That's why you see things like rent, housing, and groceries and all other commodities get slightly more expensive every single year. Now there is a major difference between something like gold and Bitcoin. Now while they can both be viewed as a hedge against inflation, gold is an actual physical and tangible asset and can be used for other things such as jewelry. You can touch and feel it. Bitcoin on the other hand has no tangible value, it's zero. And currently since it's not being used as a worldwide currency to date, it is literally being driven solely by supply and demand. That's why you see the price of Bitcoin is so volatile, meaning it goes up and down in drastic swings. You can see it goes to all time highs, goes up several hundred percent, and then can come crashing down in, you know, over the course of just a few days. Bitcoin may steady out and level out to not have as many price swings in the future when it's widely adopted like many people presume it will be. Even if the world started adopting Bitcoin as a means of payment today, could Bitcoin actually scale and, and be used as a currency today? And the answer is probably not. Bitcoin is still limited to less than 10 transactions per second. When you compare that to a company like Visa who handles thousands of transactions per second, Bitcoin is still relatively new and limited. Now that's not to say Bitcoin is not capable of scaling to many, many thousands of transactions per second, but it's just not feasible right now. All right, so let's touch on the term mining. You guys have probably heard the term mining for Bitcoin and have no idea what it means. And if you're like myself, you just wanna do a little bit of research and just get a quick high level understanding of what that actually means, what mining actually entails and how those people are rewarded and really what's the drawing factor into actually mining Bitcoin. The only way Bitcoin can actually grow and continue to be a decentralized form of currency per se is to expand the number of blocks or nodes within the blockchain. And in order to do that, you have to have a massive amount of computing power. So Bitcoin miners are taking part in building this network of nodes that form the Bitcoin blockchain technology. And if they are successful in completing a block, they can be used as verified transactions. And those verified transactions are added to the blockchain. So the miners actually get rewarded for completing this block and adding to the blockchain in the form of Bitcoin. Early on when it didn't take as much computing power, Bitcoin miners were chomping at the bit to start to build these nodes, but now it's become much more substantial. It takes a far greater uh, level of computing power and it takes a lot of electricity and power to uh, power these machines to actually mine for the Bitcoin. So now it doesn't just take one person, there's actually teams of people around the world trying to mine for Bitcoin as it becomes more difficult over the course of time. So for Bitcoin miners, it's not just the appeal of getting paid for uh, successfully adding on to the blockchain, but also to be part of that chain moving forward because they get paid a little transaction fee every time there's a transaction made through Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin does go grow on a global scale and becomes a, a useful means of payment that's widely adopted, these Bitcoin miners will likely get paid a, a handsome amount of money in the form of transaction fees. All right, so let's just look back a few years and see what the price of Bitcoin, how it's fluctuated and how we got to the point where we are today. If you look back at 2017, when Bitcoin really started to gain traction among retail investors, uh, Bitcoin went on a run all the way up to just shy of $20,000, which was seen as a bubble at the time by many people. And then it sharply came crashing down back under $4,000 less than a year later in 2018. This was likely due to the frenzy of retail investors who were betting on Bitcoin earlier on and to that before 2017 and leading up to this spike up to around $20,000 per coin. And as people started to cash out and take their profits, the price started to tank and then everybody else started to jump out causing Bitcoin to come crashing down. Again, based on supply and demand. As demand went up like crazy, it drove the price of Bitcoin up. As people saw it shooting up, everybody else said, hey, I wanna participate in that. So people started dumping more and more money in. But then once everyone started to go out and the demand dipped, Bitcoin just came crashing down, almost falling flat on its face. Now the price hovered in the few thousands of dollars, had a few spikes and dips over the next several years leading up 
to tw late 2020 and early 2021. In recent months, Bitcoin has rallied up to around $57,000 per coin, as I mentioned earlier in the video, but came crashing down today uh, around 8% to just above $52,000 per Bitcoin. Now, the recent rally is thought to be uh, not just retail investors, although there are a lot of retail investors participating. The recent rally, a lot of Bitcoin bulls are saying is more sustainable. We'll see if that holds true or not, because there's institutional investors now participating, such as Tesla. Most of you guys watching this video have probably seen the news that Tesla invested around $1.2 billion into Bitcoin. One of the biggest reasons that Tesla probably did this is to hedge some of their bet against inflation. For companies like Tesla and Apple and all these major companies that have tens of billions of dollars sitting in capital on the sidelines, that money is going to be devalued. And not just a couple hundred dollars like maybe you or me having our savings account going down by two, two, two to four percent every year. But when you are a major corporation and you have tens of billions of dollars, two or three percent is a massive amount of money. So they're hedging some of their bet long term by buying into Bitcoin. And you better believe people like Elon Musk and the board at Tesla and their engineers did their homework on Bitcoin and they do believe in the technology. Now Tesla says that they plan on eventually accepting Bitcoin potentially as a form of payment for their cars. Now we'll see if that holds true and how quickly that actually happens. Now you also have companies like PayPal that are going to be jumping on board already and are helping facilitate transactions made with Bitcoin. There's a ton of other speculation uh, with other major companies such as Apple potentially investing in Bitcoin or implementing Bitcoin or some type of crypto into the digital wallet um, of Apple Pay. So if Bitcoin truly does have the power to be a global currency that's widely used, I can see it continuing to go up. But the biggest issue that a lot of us retail investors sit with today is, do we invest our hard-earned money and try to hop along for the ride? Truth be told, you need to figure out if you can stomach the volatility and do you understand the technology at the base level. If you are a believer in the technology, perhaps you invest some money every single month, just dollar cost average into Bitcoin and just ride the wave over the next five to 10 to 25 years. That should be money that you're willing to let go to zero. And hopefully it doesn't for you guys. Hopefully Bitcoin continues to steadily rise and become more adopted for those that are invested in it. You just have to be okay with the fact that Bitcoin can not only go up by 50% in a week, it can also come crashing down 50 to 80% in a week. Try not to get caught up in all of the talk online and on social media, and especially when you flip on the TV and you see these people that are bullish on Bitcoin saying it's gonna run up to $500,000 per Bitcoin by the end of 2021 or 2022. Because if you look back throughout history, through the dot-com bubble, through the market crash of 2007 to 2009 with the housing market uh, causing a major economic collapse, there are a lot of people predicting the stock market to go infinity and beyond, believing in these major tech companies. And honestly, a lot of people got really hurt and lost a ton of money. So that's why I say proceed with caution. And you also are gonna have people who you know, are completely bearish on Bitcoin and say it's worth zero and aren't investing a, investing a penny in it. Honestly, take both sides with a grain of salt and just understand that volatility is going to exist. And if you guys are believers in the technology and the use of Bitcoin um, as a global currency in the future, then maybe you should dollar cost average every single month and just get in and ride the wave. Famed investor and entrepreneur Mark Cuban even says that this is starting to look a lot like the tech bubble or the dot-com bubble of the late 1990s into 2000, when all these tech companies had sky-high valuations and everybody was cheering them on, saying they could just keep going higher and higher and higher, and then everything came crashing down. Many of these tech companies went bankrupt and completely out of business. However, there were some companies that survived the dot-com bubble and have flourished and, and grown substantially over time. One of the most notable is Amazon. Mark Cuban is a pretty smart guy, so, I like his uh, viewpoint on blockchain technology. He is a believer in blockchain, but he is a little wary on Bitcoin. He thinks that uh, Bitcoin, if the crypto market is to continue to exist over the next several decades, Bitcoin is likely going to be the leader and continue to move forward. Maybe that's the one that survives if there is a major collapse in the crypto market. However, when someone like that is signaling a, a flag saying that there may be a huge bubble and it may come crashing down in the next couple months, couple years, 
uh, I'm probably gonna tend on the side of caution. So that's why I say, if you guys do wanna invest money and start today, just put in money that you feel comfortable losing just in case it does crash to zero. I personally do not have any money in the crypto market today. However, my interest has grown substantially like probably many of you watching. So if Bitcoin crashes down again in the next several months, uh, we will consider investing a good chunk of money into Bitcoin and riding that wave. But right now I'm going to hold off because there will be those inevitable sharp pullbacks. I do have FOMO, fear of missing out, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, but at the end of the day, what are your investment goals for the long term? And make sure that the investments you make today are not purely based on speculation and you guys are comfortable making investments that align to your goals. There are gonna be people that make a fortune and become millionaires or even billionaires through the crypto market and with Bitcoin, and there's also going to be an equal amount of people that go broke and lose a ton of money. So of course, just proceed with caution. I would love to hear from you guys. Are you invested in Bitcoin? Are you believers in blockchain technology? Are you believers in, in Dogecoin or all these other different cryptos that are out there? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. What are your predictions for Bitcoin? Are you guys bullish? Are you bearish? Or maybe you're not even on board with Bitcoin and you're full believers in these other uh, uh, crypto technologies or blockchain technologies such as Ether. And I mentioned Dogecoin, the, one of the most popular ones so far in 2021. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Drop your comments and questions below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you got some value from this video. Uh, and I hope to see you all back again soon.